Yo, my name is BK Brent and in this video we are going to be talking about the rank 1 gear challenge in God Eater 3. This is a form of shibari play, which is essentially the concept of adopting rules and restrictions to gameplay in order to make the game more challenging and more fun. In the case of GE3, the base game's balance is kind of not great. If 4 players in netplay are using maxed out gear, you can steamroll most of the missions effortlessly at alarming speeds. This can be kind of boring. So as the name suggests, this challenge restricts you to only using rank 1 gear, in order to make the game harder and more satisfying to play and improve at. The rank 1 gear challenge typically assumes a list of default rules, which are as follows. A full set of unupgraded rank 1 Amit P gear, the game's starting equipment. No plus bonuses are allowed on your gear, you must be as weak as possible. No install skills. Some that don't affect damage or stats may be allowed depending on the session. No item uses, including traps and recovery items. This means that you have to bring and actually use healing bullets on teammates. And lastly, burst arts, engages, burst control units and axle triggers are usually allowed unless otherwise specified. Typically speaking, the room host dictates and specifies the rules for the session. If you are comfortable with the normal rules and want to tackle an even greater challenge, some of the harder rules that can be used are as follows. No burst starts, taking it back to the old school. Custom bullets only, also known as CB only. You are only allowed to use custom bullets for healing and no OP based heal bullets. The purpose of this rule is to introduce a limit to the total pool of healing so that you make less mistakes. It also encourages guard heals. Area Restriction Rules These mean that you have to fight the Aragami in a specified area of the map, typically in a smaller place like the classic church only, performer or jester only. These are for aggro control or the opposite of control sometimes. The Ransen Rule This rule applies when fighting multiple targets. It means you are not allowed to split up the Aragami. It usually gets paired with the Axle Trigger or Area Restriction Rules mentioned above. The Ignore Aragami rule, also for multiple targets. This rule means that you cannot kill or attack a certain enemy in a mission, like the Amen Ra clone in class 30, or the Crocodile in class 36. The No Heating Whatsoever rule. This one will put some hair on your chest, if anything. But BK, this sounds hard as hell. I'm not good enough to even try this. Well, in that case, neither am I and I have over 4,000 hours on this game. Rank 1 play is pretty much all I do in GE3, and I still get bodied in these sessions with hardcore rules. And I have a great time. And it's the reason why I still play God Eater 3. And that's the point. It's about having fun, and giving the game replayability. Regardless of what you may initially think, the Rank 1 rules are flexible enough to accommodate players of all skill levels but it would certainly help if you had the mindset to treat this as a training session with the willingness to improve at the game. I mean, saying you're not good enough to practice doesn't really make sense, right? That's basically what this is. However, as you've seen, some of the rules can get crazy, so it's recommended that you start with the basics. Rank 1 gear, no items, no install skills, and then take it from there. You could also play rank 1 solo, but it really shines in net play. It emphasizes underrated aspects of the game that are not prevalent in normal play, such as deep aragami engagement knowledge and, like, actual teamwork. Healing each other, sharing burst, making quick decisions based on the flow of aggro, these all become very important components in rank 1 play. Likewise, if you're fully geared up and staggering aragami on every hit in the normal game, you can quite easily never genuinely learn how to fight some of them competently, which is a damn shame because some of these enemies are really well designed and fun to fight. But with that being said, there are some things about rank 1 play that you should probably know about. For starters, the missions end up taking a lot longer, obviously, but this can result in a lot of timeouts, if you or your teammates play very passively. Also, given the nature of the challenge, certain gear types become more favorable. This mostly refers to the automatic gun types because they are a lot more proficient at healing teammates. If you play in a rank 1 session with very hard rules, you could also become unmotivated or just not have a good time. 
but there's nothing wrong with telling the host that the rules are beyond what you can currently handle and then coming to a compromise. Overall, rank 1 play is not for everyone. It can make the game quite challenging. It can force you to play in a way that is different from how you normally would. However, if you give it a try, it's really fun. And I say you have nothing to lose by giving it a shot. Rank 1 play can offer a fresh take on God of 3's gameplay. If you become skilled enough to handle some of the harder rules, this challenge can really serve to develop GE3 as a hell of a co-op action game, which is a unique experience that you won't find anywhere else. I mean, how many other games have you fighting for your life against two Hannibals at the same time, in a tiny church with no burst arts, and the only safety net you have is your body's ability to preemptively react to your death, and then hope that they can actually fucking aim the heal bullets. <laughs> yeah, it's addictive. Trust me. This was BK Brent and Korowa Game Dead Demo. I'll see me in rank one netplay.